Hello everyone, welcome to another tutorial on QuickBooks Online. My name is Claudia. I've been a bookkeeper for over 20 years. I have a master in accounting and I'm bringing to you the best and most updated information on QuickBooks Online. We want to help you run QuickBooks smoothly and be able to have the right point of reference. So you, you can plan your business, you can set goals and you know exactly where you are and exactly where you want to go. For you, accountants and bookkeepers, we want to help you too so that you can keep your, your client's book up to date. Today we're going to talk about more uncategorized transactions. We're going to talk about uncategorized expense and uncategorized income. When to categorize them as uncategorized transactions and how to fix it, how to send how to send the list to your clients if you're a bookkeeper or accountant or if you are a business owner how to go back there and recategorize them without much further ado we're gonna go straight into QuickBooks Online okay here is our QuickBooks Online if you're a bookkeeper or accountant you're gonna see uh, uncategorized transactions right here okay uh, if you are not a bookkeeper or accountant, you're going to find on your profit and loss. So you're going to run your reports. But first, we're going to put some transactions in there. When do I categorize as uncategorized? I I'm going to tell you, a lot of times you may not know how to co categorize a certain transaction, especially if you're a bookkeeper or accountant. Uh, so you want to reconcile the account but you don't know exactly uh, how to categorize a transaction and you want to reach out to the business owner and ask them so in this situation you can categorize a transaction as uncategorized uncategorized not asset <laughs> don't and don't record as a transfer you're going to categorize an, as an expense or an income but it's going to be uncategorized expense or uncategorized income and then you can send the list to your client for more information so let's suppose that i don't know what this expense is um, so i'm gonna go ahead and make sure that this is under categorized i i can put the name of the vendor or the um, the vendor here i'm, I'm just gonna put vendor oh and i don't know the categorization so i'm going to put uncategorized expense okay because this is an expense and with this income i also don't know what it is once again i do not want to record as a transfer i want to categorize this transaction as income uh if i don't know the name of the the customer you know you can just leave it open or in this case let's suppose that you did know the name of the customer i would put customer if not just leave it empty okay and here i am going to put what uh, uncategorized now income this is actually income okay we're gonna put a couple of those i don't once again i don't know what this is and I'm going to put here as uncategorized income. And let's suppose that you put all the categorization as uncategorized or you categorize everything else and then you reconcile the accounts. The next thing is to send those transactions to the client. So if the best way for me, well, if you are a bookkeeper and accountant, you have the books review here and you have the tool where you can request the client it hasn't hasn't been open in there they changed it recently so you used to be able to ask through here but i think they are working quickbooks is working on it so you can ask again but right now it's not giving us the option so what you do you go into reports and in this case you are going into the profit and loss because expense and income is always on the profit and loss we're going to do it last year and I'm going to see the transaction as an uncategorized income. I can go ahead and click on those transactions. It's going to open up for me and see this little page on the top right hand side. 
yeah, you can click on it and send as an Excel to the client. So that's gonna create an Excel spreadsheet and you can attach that to the client and request the client to open up um, and you can request the client what those transactions are, the detail on those transactions, okay? Once the client send it back, uh, the only thing you will need to do is categorize the way it's supposed to. So you will click on this transaction, put the name of the vendor, and you want to be able to ask what the name of the, and I'm sorry, this is income. So the, what the name of the customer is, okay? So let's suppose that the name of the customer is customer and that this transaction is sales. Now, one more thing. If it is income, one thing you want to know is if there is an invoice for this client, okay? And if there is an invoice for this client, and by the way, I'm going to create an invoice for this one here. I'm going to show you how to fix it, especially if the, the payment was not recorded uh, in QuickBooks Online, if it is just sitting in there, okay? So I'm just going to create the invoice. Let's suppose it's already created in there. Um, remember, it's going to be for customer. And let's suppose that this was January 2023. Because they paid in... Um, February, right? So it's got to be in January. <laughs> Remember, the invoice date can never be for after the payment is made. So if not, you're going to create what we uh, what we call, well, what is categorized in QuickBooks as um, not uncategorized, but unapplied cash payment, okay? So you don't want that error. You want to make sure that the invoice date is for before the payment was made. So uh, let's put here service or something else. Let's see. Valuation meeting. Okay, whatever it is. And it's for $700 in this case. And we're going to save this invoice just so that it's here. Okay. So how do I find out if there is an invoice for that? So let's suppose you see this uncategorized income and the client says oh this one belongs to customer okay well, of course they're gonna tell the name of the customer this is just <laughs> something I came up with it's not not very creative but so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go into the customers and I'm gonna verify uh, if there is an invoice open for customer so I'm gonna go to customer and I'm gonna verify if there is an invoice open, and there is, okay? And client says, oh, this is, this is the invoice that is supposed to be paid, paid off, because this client did pay for the invoice, okay? So what am I going to do here? Okay, so here is the transaction. We're gonna receive payment, and when I receive payment, I wanna put the date of the uh, the deposit which was February 1st I can put it for before as well but I want to make sure that is not for after okay so let's suppose that it was paid let's say January 30th but I didn't deposit until uh, the first right so we're gonna send it to undeposited funds or payment to deposit which is the same and I want you to be careful. If there is a credit memo, we're not applying that credit memo, credit memo, okay? This is just a payment, so you wanna uncheck that and make the payment to this invoice. Okay, on the 30th, payment to deposit, this is the right invoice. You verify with the client what the invoice is, if that's the case, or if you know, <laughs> that's, um, that's what you're gonna do. So I recorded that payment. Now I'm going to go and fix that transaction. So I'm back on in that transaction, uncategorized, and I can click on it. Okay. And remember, <laughs> uh, remember that this transaction 
uh, the payment that I just recorded was sent to undeposited funds and this was a deposit so when I click on that transaction it's gonna open a deposit and if there is anything sitting on undeposited funds I'll be able to select that so this is one more reason for you to send to undeposited funds because if you send it straight, straight to the bank, you won't be able to do make this change, especially if you're already reconciled. Because in this case, I had already reconciled. I just wanted to re ask the client what this transaction was afterwards because I was not sure. But I wanted to move on with the account, so I did reconcile, right? So how do I fix this? See that this is the uncategorized income that I recorded so that I could reconcile and this is the transaction the payment that I just recorded so I'm going to select the payment and I'm going to delete that uncategorized transaction here because I was able to record the payment to the right invoice now it's associated the invoice with the invoice and the amount is the same everything is good so I'm going to save and close and voila, I fixed this transaction. So I showed you two ways to fix that uncategorized income. Once, one, one example is when there is no invoice, then you just have to record it as sales, or let's suppose that it's owner's investment, you record it as owner's investment. And the other one is, um, is a transaction that did have an invoice, right? So you record that invoice, payment into undeposited funds or payments to deposit you click on that uncategorized income and you're able to select that transaction and fix it look no more uncategorized income with uncategorized ex expenses uh it's the same thing to send to your client if you're sending to your client you want to click here the list of transactions will show up right here one of them is actually a deposit of $200. So it's not expense, but it's income. So we're going to change that. So we're going to fix this one as well. We know how to fix those, right? Oh, not insurance. Okay. We're going to go back there because there was one more transaction. So. We have this uncategorized expense here. You asked the client what this was, client said what it was. So you want to go ahead and put the, the categorization for this transaction, let's suppose is contractor. So you're able to put contract, labor, and save and close. So that expense is very simple, right? But income is a little more complex. So you want this to go over and categorize them correctly right from the report you can do it right from that list we have one more transaction here and let's suppose that this is just owner's contribution so we're just going to categorize as such for investment and i am going to put owner even close okay that's it that is it okay so we fixed all the uncategorized income and uncategorized expense keep in mind income will take a little bit more so I'm gonna go back here all right okay I hope that this was useful remember uncategorized income is the one that you need to be most careful because if there is an invoice or a payment associated with that if it is a payment, you want to find that payment and put it onto undeposited funds or payment to deposit. This, If it is reconciled, you can go ahead, go back into that list and click on the transaction and choose that transaction from undeposited funds. So that's why you want to send it to undeposited funds or payment to deposit, not to the bank account. If it is recorded to the bank account, you can change that change it to undeposited funds. Okay, so if the invoice has not been recorded as paid, you want to go ahead and record that invoice as paid, send to undeposited funds, go to the transaction, you're able to select that and delete the one that is incorrectly 
So this way you are not messing up your reconciliation whatsoever. We showed you how to send an Excel spreadsheet with the list of transactions that your client needs to give more information. Usually what I ask the client is, can you give me uh, the name of the vendor and what the expense was for? And on the income, I'm gonna ask the client if there is an invoice if, or if there is an invoice, what is the invoice number? And if there's no invoice, what kind of income? Is it product sales or is that owner's investment? Uh, whatever it is, the name of the client, if there's no invoice, what was the sale for? Okay, so hopefully this was useful. If you like this content, please subscribe to our channel. Only a small portion of our viewers subscribe to our channel. And just click on the subscribe. You're going to be able to be updated, up to date with information on QuickBooks Online on a weekly basis. We actually bring two videos a week where we double the number of content for you so that we can keep you up to date. So subscribe to our channel, share with your friends, with your family. If you have any questions, write down below. And we're going to be able to answer pretty quickly. <laughs> I hope that you have a wonderful week. And I hope to see you again next time. And until next time, keep on smiling. <laughs>